Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Base Live. I am Liz Pru, VP of Marketing here at Base. I saw a bunch of you just hopped on, and I'm sure more will trickle in. Um, but wanted to go ahead and welcome you all. Um, if you are new to Base Live, this is um, Base, the first ever platform built for assistance, our free weekly series where we host wonderful influencers like our guests here today to give you tips, tricks, resources, all the things. Um, I'm so excited about today's event um, with Marie Herman. Hello, Marie. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Thank you for having me here today. Absolutely. Yes. Um, today's topic, everyone, is goal creation and self-assessment. And if you have not met Marie before, um, she is the owner of MRH Enterprises, which provides speaking, writing, and training services as well as corporate consulting to help administrative professionals like all of you here today advance their careers. Um, and during this session, Marie's going to help you understand why you need to not only blow your own horn, but break out the break the entire orchestra and look at how you can summarize the critical support that you provide and use that assessment to create goals and request training for future development, um, particularly with performance reviews, which is something you all ask about a lot. Um, so I'm very, very excited for today. And um, a couple of housekeeping items. If you have any questions, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, drop them in the chat. Um, Marie will try to get to as many as she can during her presentation, but I'll be monitoring that so that way we can um, do a little bit of Q&A at the end um, and answer any questions that come up. But Marie, I'll let you say hello, introduce yourself if there's something I didn't cover, and then we can kick off kick it off if that works for you. It does. Awesome. So welcome everyone. Good afternoon. I have been working with administrative professionals for literally decades. I used to be an administrative professional. I've been sitting in your chairs. I have done the thankless work behind the scenes that all of us have to do. And one of the things that I've noticed over the years, over and over again, my students come to me asking me, how do I put it all together in a self-assessment? I don't know how to put my job down on paper and make it look like I'm doing something. And we all know we're doing a million things behind the scenes, but a lot of times we are doing tasks that might be five minute tasks or 10 minute tasks. And if you just write them the way they sound of, well, I put paper in the copier, it doesn't sound like we do anything. And I find a lot of times our bosses also don't have any understanding of how long things take. Uh, one of my favorite stories is remembering a boss complaining to me about how long it was taking me to arrange some travel for him. And so he decided he was going to call the travel agency because he knew it would go much faster then. And he was on the phone with them for 45 minutes while I was sitting outside of his office I'm not going to lie, I was basically giggling like a little schoolgirl <laughs> because he was getting more and more and more frustrated. And at the end of that conversation, when he hung up, I walked into his office and I just kind of stood there in the doorway for a moment going, well, are you satisfied now? <laughs> you know, they don't often get a chance to see how frustrating it is for us behind the scenes with the work that we do and how long things actually take that on paper look like, oh, I called the travel agency. It was nothing. Right. So... That is what led to me creating this program. Um, I originally did it as a magazine article and I expanded it into a webinar to talk about how to put our jobs down on paper for a self-assessment, how to let our bosses know what we do, how we do it, how well we do it, when the reality is when we do our jobs well, it looks effortless. Nobody realizes how much work is going on beneath the surface when we are doing our jobs well. So. For the next little less than an hour, uh, here's what we're going to be looking at. Why do companies even use self-assessments? Why do they bother with that step when sometimes it almost feels like nobody's reading them? How do those self-assessments self benefit you? What's the advantage for you of going and doing a self-assessment? What are some of the qualities of your self-assessments that you ought to be thinking about? How do you prepare them? How do you write them effectively? How do you tie them into your goals then? And how do you use them to advance your career? Because the truth is they are a tremendous tool for advancing your career. And they're really underutilized for most of us because we hate writing them. We hate it. It makes it feel like we're shining a spotlight on all the things we didn't get done in the last year. But that 
that's not the purpose of a self-assessment. So I'm also going to share a couple of sample goals to give you an idea of how to write your goals so that number one, they're more achievable. And number two, they make you look like a stronger employee and they help to better convey the full extent of the work that you are doing. So I'm going to try and fit all that in in the next hour or so. So why do companies use these self-assessments? Well, one of the biggest reasons is that it gives the company a chance to get a pulse for how the employees are doing, but it's not just about uh, what you say you're doing. It's also to see if there's a disconnect between what you say you're doing versus what the manager says you're doing and how you're doing it. If they repeatedly see that you're saying, I'm doing five-star work and your manager is saying one-star work, there's a disconnect there. And that disconnect should be addressed and communicated about. And whether that means better communication of what we should be doing, or whether that means you being better communicating about what you're doing so that your boss knows you're doing things, and maybe that's why they're giving you a one star is they didn't realize you were doing things. So somewhere along the line, there's a disconnect there. And so the goal with a self-assessment is to clear up those communication gaps and to make sure that everybody knows Here's all the hard work I have put in over this past year. It gives your managers a chance to think about um, where you excelled and where you can improve. And it gives you a chance to do the same. Because very often, hmm, why is my slide not advanced there? Hang on just a moment. My slide has not advanced there. No worries. We have your slide deck up. Yeah, I see that in there, but for some reason it's not advancing. Hold on just a second. Let me check. It's because it's a holiday weekend coming up and technology <laughs> has said not today. There we go. Okay. okay. I got it. I got it reset to go. <laughs> so it gives you a chance to think about where did I do phenomenal and where could I improve? And our goal with showing where we need to improve is not to highlight our weaknesses. I'm not looking to get beat up during a performance review. It's to use it as an opportunity to request training and support and development. So when you think about it that way, you start approaching self-assessments totally differently. It opens up that conversation between you and your manager. It allows you to not only think about how you're doing your job right now, but how you want to do the job long term, how you might want to evolve your career with the company. Because a self-assessment is a first step in a career discussion with your manager of, hey, I've worked here in this position for this number of years. I'm ready to take on some more responsibilities. Maybe I'd like to transfer. Maybe I'd like to take on a slightly different role within the company. It starts that conversation, if that's something that you want to do. If you're perfectly happy in your job, hallelujah, you're probably in the 1% of the world that is. But if you're not, it's your chance to start making changes, to start getting progress made there. And it ensures that your manager is aware of everything that you do. I, I'm kind of reminded of old sitcoms, years ago sitcoms, this will be too old for some of you, where there was a classic argument between a husband and a wife, and the husband would be saying, you know, what's wrong, what's wrong, and the wife would be saying, well, if you don't know, I'm certainly not going to tell you, and that was the, the whole basis of the joke. And the odd thing is, I feel like we carry that into the office with our bosses sometimes. It's as if we expect them to know everything that we do, even if they have 20 or 30 employees reporting to them, somehow they should magically remember every single phenomenal thing that I did in the past year. How egotistical is that? They're not going to know. To be honest, I have trouble remembering all the phenomenal things that I did in the past year. And so I'm going to talk in a moment about how you put together your self-assessment. And part of the reason for giving a process to follow is that it's really easy for projects to slip through the cracks. I remember doing a self-assessment one time where I completely forgot to mention two major projects I had worked on because they were long done and I they were out of mind, out of sight, out of mind. So actually expecting my boss to remember everything I've done when I can't even remember it, that's crazy. So that's another part of the reason for the self-assessment. It's a good chance for you to remind them of how much you can do and how much you actually do 
do during the year. Say that five times fast. So why do these companies use them? As I said, it's going to give them that chance to let your managers know what things are going well for you and what things you can improve on. I'm still looking at, oh, there, okay. So how do these self-assessments actually benefit you? What's the advantage for you with them? They're going to allow you an opportunity to put forth your best accomplishments. They give you that chance to open that door for discussion about the future with the company. They give you a chance to develop a case for your promotion. And one of the ways that they do that is you can use your self-assessment against your job description to see what jobs are you doing that weren't part of your original job description in order to push through perhaps a title increase, perhaps a salary increase, perhaps a change of position, perhaps the addition of an assistant for you. All of that could come about with a good self-assessment combined with the existing job description and a comparison of the two. So they can help you grow in your career that way, and they can help you recognize when you're becoming stagnant. Because how many of us, if we were to you know, admit the truth here, could go back through our last four or five self-assessments and just change the date and turn it in again the next year? There's a lot of us that are in that position. Our jobs are not evolving the way they could or should, and our skills are becoming stagnant they're basically, that's one of those, the only difference between a rut and a grave is the depth. And so a self-assessment should be a period for you to self-assess as well and recognize, you know what, am I just coasting in this job? And maybe I'm close enough to retirement that I'm happy with that. I'm good. If I can do the exact same thing I'm doing right now for the next X number of years until I retire, I'm good to go. The problem is, a lot of employees have that idea and then they discover the companies have a different idea and all of a sudden they're looking for a job at age 58, age 60, and their skills aren't where they need to be because they haven't been developing themselves along the years. So it really is a chance for you to reflect yourself on the job that you're doing and is it the job you want? Is this what you want to be doing? Is this a challenge that really um, that gets you excited to go in and work every day. So that should be part of your self-assessment too. I always did kind of a dual self-assessment. I did the formal official one that I turned into work. And then I did one for me personally, where I wasn't necessarily going to share the results with them, but it was a more honest appraisal for my own purposes of how did I do this year? Did I do any development? Do I have anything to update my resume with? And that's another advantage of doing a good self-assessment is you can also use that to update your resume or your CV. And for a lot of us, the only time we update our resumes is when we're looking for a new job. So when we lose our job, we go back and we update our resume. How hard is it at that point to remember all the phenomenal projects you worked on in the last five or 10 years that you worked with that company? super hard to really think of what was something that I did that was fantastic. Whereas if I've been updating my resume as I go along, it's up to date all the time. It's ready to go at a moment's notice. And I can make sure that what is truly the highlights are what are on my resume. If I wait until I've lost my job, I'm updating my resume in a very stressful situation. I'm not at my best when I'm under a time deadline because I'm desperate to find a new job in order to keep my mortgage paid. And I'm not necessarily going to be in a good place to remember the past and go through what were my accomplishments of the last several years. So doing a self-assessment every year and incorporating that as part of your procedure to update your resume at the same time, really a good use of your time that way. So some of the qualities of your self-assessment. This is your chance to blow your own horn. And so many administrative professionals are uncomfortable with that. Me? Blow my own horn? Be in the limelight? No, 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 no. That is not me. That's my boss. That's why I'm the assistant. I want my boss to be in the limelight, not me. No, no, no. I could never do that. I, I can't. I can't be the one to, you know, I, I can't be the one to promote how much I did. That is such a mistake on so many levels. And yet, 
over and over and over again, that is what I see administrative assistants do. They don't own their fabulousness and you need to own it, people. Own it. You are amazing employees and you need to make sure that your fellow coworkers know that. And you need to get beyond yourself getting in the way and thinking, no, 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 people will recognize my work. Well, maybe they will and maybe they won't. As I said earlier, when we do our work really well, people have no idea how much work went into it. So this is your chance to let people know this is how much work went into my job. And so it really is something that we need to be thinking about. So I saw the comment, if I'm doing a phenomenal job in my role, but not doing anything outside of my job description, does that mean I shouldn't receive a pay increase? I feel like doing really well should be rewarded too. Um, you know, that's, that's I, I do another program on pay negotiation. And so that's one I would kind of want to segue into that. Yes and no. If you're doing a phenomenal job, yes, there should be some component of a merit increase that comes to you. But the truth is for most companies, when you're doing your job, that's what they consider your salary to be for. And so in their minds, when they hired you, they hired you at a salary that was appropriate for doing an excellent job. That's how a lot of companies think. So it's, it, it's on you to go in and negotiate with them to try to get higher salaries. I wouldn't expect your company to do it automatically to recognize you. There are some companies that do, it does happen, but far more often you get what you negotiate, not what you deserve. And so it's on us to learn negotiation skills and to get in there and request the higher salaries and to be able to justify it with the work that we're doing. You should also be using these self-assessments to seek that growth. Every time you have a weakness, and I'm talking real weaknesses here, I'm not talking those fake weaknesses that you give as an answer when someone asks you that during a job interview. What's your weakness? Well, I'm a perfectionist, you know? <laughs> we make up these weaknesses that we think the recruiter wants to hear. I'm not talking about those. <laughs> the real weaknesses, the things where, you know what? I'm, I'm not as good working with data as I should be. I would like to learn to get stronger with data analysis. I wanna learn Power BI because I know that's something that would help me with my Excel data. It would um, let me summarize a lot of the big information that I'm working with in a much more efficient way. Um, and so that would be something to recognize in yourself that there is a tool out there that would help me do my job better if I only learned it. I would like to dedicate the time and resources to doing that. I want the company to provide financial support for that training. And so that's the reason that you're looking at this with the growth. Um, get to the point. I kind of struggle with this one sometimes because on the one hand, I want to flesh it out a little bit to make it look a little more important for some of those tasks that don't feel as important on paper. Everything is important. It is equally important to file that paper into the file folder as it is to, to get a grant for the company. It's everything is important, even the smallest details. But it's hard to feel like it's as important when you're doing something like putting paper in the copier. What is Power BI? Power BI is Power Business Intelligence. It is an add-on that's available. It works with Microsoft Excel. It's on the data ribbon in the Get and Transform Data section with the Power Query Editor. If you have never learned it, you should learn about that function because it is phenomenal and time-saving, especially if you're pulling in data from other places on a regular basis and doing simple modifications to it over and over again. Like I get a report from Crystal Reports and every month I take that data and I delete these rows and I delete these columns and I uh, change out this formula, but I basically do the same steps every single month with new data. You want Power BI because it will remember all those steps and do it for you going forward. Super, super tool. So get to the point, back to getting to the point of the self-assessment. What that means is make sure that you are being clear on your self-assessment as to how you did and what you want different in the future. Don't hide it, don't bury the lead, so to speak. So get to the point during those. 
It's our version of Power BI for Google. My company doesn't use Microsoft. Not that I'm aware of. Uh, I've done work with Google's G Suite and no, there is not anything equivalent to Power BI with it. Be honest in your self-assessment. That doesn't mean you're gonna highlight weaknesses that you have no intention of fixing, but it does mean that you talk about real things that you want to develop in yourself. If you feel like, you know what, my proofreading skills are not where they should be. Be honest about that and say, I would like to improve my proofreading skills. I feel like things are slipping by me and I really want to stay on top of them. I want to put out products that are as perfect as possible. And I think it would help me if I attended a proofreading class at the local college. Will you support that? So that's something that can be helpful. And I'll tell you, that's especially the kind of response you should have when you receive a criticism during a performance review. You know, when we get a performance review, we tend to think, well, I got these 25 fantastic things and I got this one horrible thing. My company hates me. That's the worst performance review I've ever had. I got a terrible rating. No, you didn't. You had 25 fantastic things. You had one terrible thing, but that's what we focus on as humans. So you need to get beyond that mindset, be professional and say, thank you for that feedback. I agree that I could improve in this area. I think a great way for me to do that would be taking a class, attending a conference, reading a book, doing something, respond back of here is what I can do to to improve the thing that you have commented as a negative. And the ideal thing about doing that at that moment when they are telling you this is an area where we think you need to improve is put your money where your mouth is, people. You want me to improve this. You should be willing to pay for me to take a class to get stronger in this skill. So that's your time to ask for that. And I would also ask for things like coverage for certifications. I want to become a certified administrative professional. I want to become a Microsoft Office specialist. I want to get a PACE certification. I want to get whatever your certification is. That's the time to ask for it as well during those um, self-assessments and setting of the goals. And then you want to lay that groundwork for the future. And that's what asking for things like certifications is doing. It's laying the groundwork for future growth, either personally in your career or within the company, either way. So you should be maintaining your self-assessment year round. And I know this is something hardly anyone does. Most of us do our self-assessment once a year when it's due. We sit down, we agonize over it for an hour or so, and then we go back and write down everything we can remember for our self-assessment. Or we open up last year's change the date, do a quick scan to see if there's any major changes and turn it in. By maintaining it year round, you'll have a better shot at remembering everything that you worked on. So here's an example of one of my past years. Um, this is when I was supporting the chief technology officer at the Fermi National Accelerator Lab. And so I maintained a list for myself. And I actually started this back in 1997. That was the year I decided, you know what? I've been an admin for a couple of years at this point. I guess I'm gonna be an admin for the long term. I wanna put together a career path for myself because I believe my career is in my own hands. It's not in the hands of my company. And so I started that year putting together a list just like this. I was tracking everything I did that year. And I also put together a list of things I wanted to learn or certifications I wanted to pursue or, you know, whatever, fill in the blank what your goals are. But they were career goals for myself that I kept a personal list of. And so that year I have, you know, a lengthy list of things that I did. I, I, led a study group at the workplace. I did, I organized a division picnic. I uh, did a boot camp. I was in IWP as a division leader at that time. I attended a workshop. So I included all that kind of information. I included magazine articles I wrote, any study groups that I led, any classes I attended, any uh, new initiatives that I developed at work. If I suggested something and it happened, you know, anything like that went on to this list. And this became somewhat of the basis for my self-assessment. I didn't necessarily turn this in exactly in this format, but I used it to remind myself what I had done, what I had accomplished, and what I wanted my executive to know about my work. 
So for the format of the self-assessment, you might have a template provided by your company. That's one possibility. You might want to create your own template. There's lots of examples out there on the internet you can search for. Uh, you might want to do an oral evaluation, just meeting with your boss and going over it verbally. I would actually not recommend that, though. I would rather see something in writing something that you have documented over the years of this is the work that I have done. And I, there's a lot of reasons for that. One is for legal protection. Um, I find sometimes things happen and I things, whatever the things are, maybe you get a new boss and the new boss doesn't like you. And so you've had 10 years of stellar performance reviews and then all of a sudden you're a one star. What? Come on. That kind of stuff happens. And so having the backup to show in writing that, you know, here's what I've done in the past, here's the ratings I've received, here's the, the past history can help a lot to, to counter negative claims that come about for circumstances that are really kind of beyond your control. Um, and I think we've all seen things like that happen. Um, now, there's other ways to approach that situation. That's a totally separate presentation. But... Um, I would just recommend that when you're dealing with self-assessments, when you're dealing with things related to your career, try to put things in writing to protect yourself and to protect the company. And the other reason that that can happen is a boss may promise something. They may say, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to pay for your certification. We'll pay for everything. We'll pay for the class you take. We'll take, pay for the certification. We'll pay for the books. And then fast forward 30 days or something, and all of a sudden it's, oh, no, I never said that. No, I don't know what you're thinking of. I didn't say that. Well, if it's in writing, it's there. So it's much harder to do a he said, she said kind of conversation versus here it is documented in writing. So if you do an oral evaluation of some type, if you do an oral self-assessment, I would follow it up with an email saying to confirm, here's my notes from today and get it in writing. And then you could also use an existing third party template if you wanted to. So. Here is the process that I follow for doing my self-assessment. Uh, first thing, I look through my calendar because uh, all the meetings that I attended, that's going to show up on there. That's an easy way to see, well, I served on this committee. I organized this event. I, um, I attended these meetings on behalf of my boss. I did the minutes for these meetings. So looking at your calendar, that's the place to start with your self-assessment. Go back through the full last year. Scan your emails in your inbox folders and see if there are broad categories that show up repeatedly there that you can use with your self-assessment that you can use to capture your notes on that. Review your network folder, the drive, the, you know, whether it's OneDrive or you're, you have a regular network drive or it's in Teams or whatever, but review the files that you have created. That can often jog your memory of, oh yeah, I forgot I worked on a 200 page contract. That was huge and it took weeks. I should mention that. Um, so look for those kinds of things. What were the you know, PowerPoint presentations that you worked on, spreadsheets that you worked on? Did you create macros to streamline some processes in the documentation? Did you create forms that made things much easier for people to give input on certain topics? So put that kind of information into your self-assessment. Don't forget personal activities that could impact you professionally. So that's going to be things like I took a first aid class or a CPR class or I did, um, I learned Spanish, so now I'm bilingual and I can, I can um, help with clients that are Spanish speaking. So maybe something like that. Think about something that maybe it's personal, but it has an overlap with professional. That doesn't mean, you know, I got my Wilton cake decorating certificate, which I have and which my coworkers loved because I brought in cakes from practice sessions, but I'm not putting that on my self-assessment. <laughs> Probably. I guess I couldn't say it was employee morale improvement, <laughs> but generally speaking, I'm not going to put that in there. What education or certifications did you get in the last year? And again, for me, this is a big one. Sometimes we have intentions of taking classes, of staying educated, of staying cutting edge with our skills, but time gets in the way. And before we know it, months have passed, years have passed, and I got nothing to show for it. Um, if you have nothing to update on your resume, 
if you have nothing to put down on your self-assessment for education over the last year, and I recognize this last year was a little tricky with the pandemic, but hey, there's virtual training. So there is training out there. Um, if you have nothing to put down, that should be a huge red flag to you that your career could stagnate. And that if you unexpectedly found yourself doing a job search tomorrow, you might discover your skills are out of date. So that is absolutely something that you want to keep an eye on. If you want to stay ahead of the curve on that, keep an eye on the job ads. And even if you're not looking, you don't have to be looking for a job to keep an eye on the job ads. Um, check them out. LinkedIn has job postings. They're, they're indeed.com. <coughs> Anything like that. Hang on. And watch for the software they're asking for, the skill sets they're asking for, the kind of experience they're looking for, and make sure that you would be qualified for jobs that you would be interested in if you lost your job today. Find a way to bring that in. Um, so, Julie, what's my favorite third-party assessment? Or can I get one tailored by me? Um, I don't have a favorite for third party. I have to say, I don't have a favorite for that. I've looked around at a couple of them and I just find a lot of them are so similar that I, I can't pick a favorite from them. There, there's a lot of similar entities out there. So mine were generally just a real simple template. It was basically what I did well, uh, what I struggled with, and here's how I addressed it. Here's how I worked around it. I always included that follow-up. It was never, well, I didn't get it done. Oh, well. It would be, I didn't get it done, but here's what I did instead, or here's how I'm going to get it done in the future, or here's what changes I made as a result of not getting it done. It always included that second half. You have to include that too. So then it's not a failure, it's a learning experience. And so that's what I always want to convey in my self-assessments. Have you picked up any new responsibilities? Are you doing anything new that you weren't doing previously? Make sure that makes it into your self-assessment. Have you made any suggestions for improvements or have you spearheaded any changes or have you done anything that saved the company money or have you done anything that saved your coworkers time? Have you done something that uh, streamlined some process that goes into your self-assessment? So this should be the process every single year is check this, check this, check this, check this, check this, and make sure it's comprehensive with what you're covering for your self-assessment. So how do you write an effective self-assessment? Um, if you are not really getting the information that you need from all of these sources, if you've gone through them all and you still feel like, I don't know what I do. <laughs> I don't know what to tell them. Start by doing a time log. Uh, do it even if it's just for a week, a couple of days, but do a time log where you literally write down. It could be as often as like every 15 minutes. And that might seem like overkill. And oh my gosh, I'm going to spend all my time logging my time. <laughs> but just for a couple of days or a week, print out a table with the days of the week broken out in the 15 minute increment. So it looks like basically your schedule view from calendar. And write in just as you go along everything you did and that serves a lot of different purposes it lets you know where your your leaks are so to speak in your schedule that oh now i realize i've got a couple co-workers stopping by to see me at my desk way more often than i realized and that's actually sucking out two or three hours of my week when it's all put together but it's in little 15 minute chunks and it doesn't seem like it's that much um it also tells you overall how you spent your time with those five minute tasks. So I put paper in the copier. I updated an Excel spreadsheet. I updated a PowerPoint spreadsheet. It gives you an idea of how you're actually spending your time. And then you can go back and turn those into categories. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. So, well, I'll talk more about that right now, actually. <laughs> Detail your broad categories first. So these are the, the big umbrella categories. I do travel planning. I do meeting planning. I do calendar maintenance. I do equipment maintenance. I do the inventory for IT of all the uh, computers and the projectors in the building. I do the timekeeping for the employees, or I oversee their timekeeping. I do the reports for it. I do the purchasing, you know, whatever your broad categories are, and they'll be different for your different jobs, of course. And then break out larger projects separately. So I organized an APW uh, luncheon. I 
Um, in my case, some of my special projects were that I organized the, um, the summer student program. Uh, I worked for a company that had over 900 summer students. Um, I didn't get all of them. I got like 100 of them for my particular uh, division. And so I was responsible for that. I made sure that they had mentors assigned to them. They had work assigned to them. They received orientation. They had... Um, their paperwork was all in order. Everything associated with managing of the summer student program I took care of within my division. So that was an example of a larger project that would get broken out separately. Uh, I maintained the company intranet site. So that was a separate project. And so I would have a variety of those types of projects that I would include in my self-assessment. Um, admins don't always have that so if you do have it make sure you're highlighting it in your resume or in your self-assessment excuse me but even if you don't have those kind of projects that doesn't mean that there aren't significant ways that you're contributing to the company if you weren't contributing in a significant way you'd be out of a job for sure so that's something that we need to recognize as well so then how do you tie these self-assessments into your goals if you had goals carried over from last year, you always want to address those goals as part of your self-assessment. That's where I start. I make a copy of last year's goals and then I report my progress on each one of those. Done, 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 done. Now in my case, when I'm choosing my goals, um, I always try to include goals that I'm gonna do anyway. So I always had a goal of writing at least one magazine article a year. Since I'm planning to do that anyway, and I want to do that for my own career advancement, that went on my list for my goals for the coming year. I knew I was going to get that done. Um, so anything that I know I'm going to get done anyway, I always try to include in my self-assessment. I am very careful in how I phrase my self-assessment goals. So I will say I'm going to sit for an exam, not that I'm going to pass an exam. And that's very different wording. So make sure that you think through how you're wording your goals when you're writing those. Um, it really is something that um, we can kind of back ourselves into a corner. It's better to do something where you can show progress and it's not just it's done. Um, because if it's an it's done goal and you don't get it done, you failed that goal for the year. But if it's a progress goal, you can show progress towards it. And so you can have a successful goal even if it's not completed. Uh, so think about that when you're setting your goals as well. How can I break this out into steps so that I can get milestones? I've completed the first phase. I've completed the second phase. I've completed the third phase. Give serious consideration to those weaknesses I talked about. Now, you do not want to address weaknesses in your self-assessment that you have no intention of fixing. So my weakness, and this is a real weakness of mine, is when I had to go and work in an office, and fortunately I don't have to anymore, I'd be late in the morning. I'm not going to lie to you. I was not ideal as an employee in that respect. I would often come in like 10 minutes late in the morning. Now, I was not late the rest of the day. If there was a meeting, I was on time for the meeting. I was on time, you know, lunch. I was on time um, throughout the day. And I would stay late every night. And so I always offset the time. It was never a matter of the number of hours. But I was always late first thing in the morning. And, and the primary reason for that was that I'm one of those people who, oh, I can get one more thing done before I get out the door. Now, I know my boss didn't love it that I was late. It wasn't a deal breaker for them, obviously, but they didn't love it that I was late. I'm not going to list that I'm late every morning as a weakness on my self-assessment because clearly it didn't matter to me enough to get off my butt and get out the door earlier so I could get to work on time. And in my case, I wasn't in a position where I was like the one with the key and nobody else could get in if I wasn't at my desk. So there wasn't a situation like that where other people couldn't do something because I was late. Don't highlight weaknesses that you have no intention of changing. So that's one, I just ignored it. I'm, I'm not mentioning that at all. But a weakness of something that I really do want to change. I want to learn how to run reports in this new software so that I don't have to wait for IT to run a report for me. There's a weakness and a thing that can be fixed. Sign me up for a class. Let me learn that skill. And I'm going to save the company time and money by freeing up the IT guy's time and allowing me to take point on running reports for the software. 
that's a weakness that I can put in in my self-assessment and write a goal associated with it. So think about those kinds of weaknesses, the things where it really is a weakness for you and it's a solvable weakness that can be improved through some type of step or process. And so those are the ones that you want to include in your self-assessment. And recognize that self-assessments are an opportunity to get you where you want to go. That's what you're shooting for. You're looking at the career advancement here. So when it comes to goal setting, you want to think about probably four main areas. One is going to be productivity. <clears throat> and so the productivity goals, those can be defined as things that get done in a certain amount of time. So I'm going to get more of them done in the same amount of time. That's going to be a productivity type of goal. So it might be something like I will uh, ensure that all expense reports are processed within 48 hours from receipt of all documentation. Or I will ensure that all, um, all travel is processed within 48 hours or something of that nature. I mean, there could be uh, something where it's quantifiable. And it's basically, I can do X number of widgets in X amount of time, and here's my goal, to hit this goal. Efficiency is similar, but it is going to be looking at the speed at which you get it done, but also things like the accuracy. So I will ensure that um, my proofreading skills get to the point of no more than a 1% error rate, whatever number you want to designate. I'll not have more than one mistake in every hundred documents. Um, that could be an example of an efficiency goal or that I will do something faster than I have previously done it. I will figure out a way to process this report in 45 minutes instead of an hour and a half uh, through the use of macros, forms, mail merges, um, automated functions, whatever, you know, there's a number of ways you might be able to do something with that. So that would be efficiency. The education goals, that's going to be certification, training, things of that nature. And then personal development. These are areas where I want to become a better human being, a better employee. Um, what kinds of things can I do? I want to strengthen my time management skills. I want to strengthen my memory skills. I want to learn to read faster because reading is a big part of my job. I want to become more comfortable with writing. So I'd like to do writing skills. Um, things like that. Those are going to fall under personal development. And so those are kind of the, the primary areas that you're going to break them out. And then I would encourage you to step back and look at ways to save time for other people, save money for the company, reduce expenses, streamline processes. All of that is going to fall under these goal setting things. Um, that's going to be a goal that your boss is going to love. And so those are the kind of goals you especially want to include at least one or two of those every year so that you start getting a reputation as the person who figured out a way to streamline this process, who saved the company $100,000 last year, who reduced our costs by $25,000 in this area. That's the person you want to be known as when it comes to your coworkers. So here's an example of a general overview of my job. Um, and so this is just kind of a little summary paragraph that you might include at the beginning of a performance review. You have to remember with the self-assessments, they're often getting passed on not only to your manager, but they might go to your manager's manager. And your manager's manager might have no idea what you do. So that's where the summary of what your job is. So in mine, it's my primary responsibility has been to provide administrative support to the chief technology officer and technical division headquarters staff. This includes overseeing the time card in part input process and effort reporting, travel arrangements, expense reports, correspondence, report preparation, supply ordering, filing, proofreading, organization chart updating, maintaining the TD division website, uh, coordinating reporting of department heads and scheduling calendars for the HQ staff, et cetera. So that's, that's kind of the overall summary snapshot picture of what that job was. And then from there, I would go and, and expand on those for what things I did, what I accomplished, what went well. So I know for a lot of you, the struggle is I do a million five minute tasks and it doesn't seem like it's important. Um, so here's an example of 
how you flesh those kind of projects out. So in my case, I was the administrative support to the committee that hired new scientists. And so I could have just put that down as a goal. I supported the committee that hires new scientists. That could be the line. That doesn't sound that impressive, does it? So instead we flesh it out. What does that actually mean? What are the, de what are the details of that? And so then it becomes, I provided administrative support to the Associate Scientist Selection Committee, including coordinating the distribution of resumes, maintaining a spreadsheet of candidates, organizing video and live interviews, making travel arrangements, issuing correspondence, gathering interview evaluations, and submitting the request for offer to a candidate for our human resources department. The year we had two associate scientists, or this year we had two associate scientist positions filled with a total of 43 resumes reviewed and nine candidates interviewed. I performed my responsibilities in a timely fashion and ensured the process went smoothly. How much better does that sound than I provided administrative support to the committee that hired a scientist? So there's nothing in here that's fluff fluff. I'm not making anything up. I'm not putting in false information but I'm detailing out what does that mean to provide support to the committee. So I'm, I have to think through, what does that actually mean from beginning to end? What am I doing as part of that responsibility? And so when you start thinking that way and you use that to expand your self-assessments, isn't it much easier for someone to look at that and recognize, wow, that probably took a lot of time. You had nine candidates that you had to set up travel arrangements for and then set up full days of interviews when they came in. That probably took a lot of time. That helps people recognize that this was not just a 30 minute a week kind of assignment. So that's what you wanna be looking at when you're talking about the roles that you're filling as part of your job. Flesh it out with some of the details, including where possible the qualitative details. 43 resumes, nine candidates interviewed, fill in those kind of details. I managed a budget of $125,000 for purchasing office supplies. You know, fill in those kinds of details. Then another example, software projects. So I was on a software, they used to use a software called Meeting Maker. They were migrating to a new software to manage calendars for the conference rooms and things like that. And so I oversaw the meeting maker migration for the technical division, including attending training on the process, coordinating with division administrative staff to gather all information needed and performing the manual transfers of all the conference room appointments, et cetera, to the new system, the entire process went smoothly. Or I could have said, I helped roll out the new software. Which one works better to fully convey what I did and how long it took on a self-assessment? So you see how this all comes together. What else we can do? Sample personal or team development goals. Um, we'll distribute minutes or action items within 48 hours of meetings. We'll create agendas and assist team leader in following agenda during meeting to help keep team on track for time and content. We'll track metrics of team, whatever we're being measured on. Um, so those are examples of personal goals, but they're part of teams where you're responsible for helping other people to get things done, but ultimately they're responsible for doing the work. You're responsible for the herding of the cats. Um, and so that's an example of how you can phrase some of those goals on your self-assessment. Client management goals. Maintain the calendar for the executive, including scheduling all necessary meetings with clients, business travel, and meetings. Ensure clients are contacted on a quarterly basis to ensure ongoing client satisfaction. Maintain client database with up-to-date phone numbers and addresses. Oversee mailing of holiday cards to full client database. Maintain marketing materials that are updated as needed for clients. So here's the deal with some of these. Some of these are things that if you feel like I'm actually a little worried about my job because I don't have enough to do, these are examples of things you could also suggest as I looked around and I saw a need and here's a suggestion for a way that I could help. Um, so I saw that marketing is backed up. They have trouble keeping the materials on the website updated. I could volunteer to help with that. And that's one of the ways I added to my responsibilities over time. And it's one of the ways I was able to justify training is I would take on those kinds of responsibilities. 
And in my case, I specifically focused on ways to make myself more efficient. And so I learned all the software. I learned software in depth. That's why I teach it now, because I learned it really in depth. I learned all the shortcuts. I learned all the automation tips. I learned all the ways I could use things like field codes or whatever to do my job faster. And so by the time I left my last job, they ended up having to replace me with two and a half new people. The half person was not happy, <laughs> but they, they broke my job out into two full-time positions plus a third position took on some of the roles that the first two were not doing because I had become so efficient at it. Now, that can be a challenge in that if we're already overbooked and we feel like people are putting more work on us or I can't take on more work, I'm already crazy busy. What you need to figure out is, is there, am I actually being as efficient as I can be? Do I know the software as well as I think I do? Is there a better way to do things that I'm currently doing? And that's a question you should ask yourself often. And I still do it to this day, even though I'm not an admin anymore. I still do that to this day. Is there a faster way for me to do this? Is there a better way for me to spend my time? Is there an easier way to do this? Am I being, am I being stupid in the way I'm doing this? Yes, I ask myself that question. Um, and sometimes I answer it. Yes, I am actually. Why am I getting this information? I'm putting more work on myself by doing it this way versus another way. So bring that in as well. Business development goals. Uh, you could make suggestions as a goal of research industries and trends for my boss as requested or on my own initiative. Call X number of clients a week to ask if we can assist them in any way, which is bringing in new business to the company. Going to clients who have given us business in the past but are not currently giving us business and seeing if they will give us business again. That's the kind of thing that if you did have downtime, if you suggested something like that, that brings in money to the company. That's the kind of thing they love. So that at the end of the year, you can say, I brought in $75,000 worth of business to the company by contacting prior customers to ask them if they had any other new projects for us. Set up X number of client marketing lunches with the boss every month, update marketing materials so they fully reflect our company's services, all examples of things that you could incorporate as possible goals. Technical competence, that's another area. Uh, take classes in preparation for the Certified Administrative Professional exam. Sit for the exam. Take Microsoft Office Specialist exam. Attend, a, um, attend seminars during the year on topics that are relevant to my position. So you would be specific on what those were. Submit an article for publication in uh, Executive Secretary Magazine, now Executive Support Magazine. Um, so those are different kinds of ways that you can show technical competence. And that's something that you can incorporate into your self-assessments as well. Career development goals. So when you are looking ahead for your own career, how do you want to advance? Meet with executive to discuss how my responsibilities might be increased to provide more value to the company. Train to be a backup to XYZ person so that I can increase my value to the company. Share my knowledge with my coworkers by offering lunch and learn sessions on various topics or following up on seminars attended. Act as a role model for other administrative professionals by being available as a mentor as needed. So these would be examples of goals that would advance your career. Uh, goals related to managing the business. Create a procedures manual by October 30th to document at least five of the tasks I'm responsible for. File all incoming materials within 48 hours of receipt. Oversee all travel arrangements for the people I support to ensure they're in the right location at the right time. Trips will be booked within two days of receiving all necessary information from the traveler. And then the last area is what if I don't do big important things? What if I don't do these things that sound so important? So an example of that, here's an example of how do I show on my self-assessment a small part of my job that's actually a million tasks individually and really time consuming. So pretty much all of us do something in some fashion of maintain the copiers and the printers. Um, I can rephrase that as during this past year, I ensured that our copiers and printers were functioning properly and stocked with supplies as needed. This included ordering supplies in advance, maintaining an inventory of spare parts, restocking paper and toner as needed, assisting individuals with training, troubleshooting issues with the copier like paper jams, 
monitoring the usage of the machine, placing service calls when required, and other related tasks. Now they have a better idea of what it means when you say, I maintained all the copiers and printers. This makes it much more understandable for them to wrap their head around the fact that it doesn't just mean one thing. It's not just one task. It's a whole umbrella of tasks that are very, very time consuming. And then uh, last example, I was responsible for arranging all domestic and international travel required by my seven coworkers. This included getting all necessary trip details from the travelers, contacting our travel agency, coordinating ground transportation like limos, rental cars, airline flights, hotels. In addition, I ensured any necessary paperwork was completed in advance, including registration forms, background checks, meeting itineraries, passport and visa documentation, and other related items. How much better is that than saying, I did all the travel for my coworkers? So you see where I'm going here with this. You can flesh out your examples. You can use this as a way to fully convey what you do and the importance of what you do. Part of the reason that some of us feel like we are just an admin, and I hate that expression, is that we're not owning what we do. We are important. Every detail that we do is important and it's necessary to the proper functioning of the company. We need to own that and embrace it and we need to convey that to our colleagues and to our bosses. Respect is very much a mutual issue in companies and we often don't command the respect that we should because we haven't trained our colleagues to respect us. And there is a training element involved in that. And the self-assessment is one of the prime methods of conveying that level of importance to our bosses. So I hope that has given you a better idea of how to approach your self-assessment this year, how you can go a little more confidently into that next performance review. Uh, I don't know if there's any questions or not. Um, floor is open. If I missed any during the thing, sometimes the chat zipped by where I might not have seen something. So let me know if so. That was wonderful, Marie. Thank you so much. And I think we answered most of the questions in the chat. Um, I see some folks saying now, thank you so much for everything. Um, wonderful information. And I believe, and apologies if I'm putting you on the spot, Marie, but I believe you said you would share the deck as well. I will. Um, you can, okay, perfect. So I'll email that out um, to you all, everyone. And um, before we head out, a couple of announcements. We do have our OKR Summit objectives and key results on June 9th, where we will have executive assistants that have experienced the process, an actual OKR consultant that will show you all the fun things of um, how EAs can help manage the process and embed themselves into their company's OKR process. We'll be sure to include that follow-up in our follow-up email as well, or that link in our follow-up email. And then um, additionally, we did have some sad news um, that we've heard we've lost one of our amazing members of our community, April Nadine King. Um, so if you're able, I'm gonna drop a link in the chat here. Um, her family is having a GoFundMe that will help go towards her children's education and her memorial services. So if you're able um, to donate or share, please do. We are so, so saddened to hear this. Um, it's always just awful news. So we wanted to, to provide that link if you're wanting to to donate or share. Um, Marie, thank you so much again for everything. It's always such a pleasure talking to you. Um, you. And I'm so glad we could finally get this on the calendar and I'm sure that we'll be collaborating more in the future. So, I'm really so thank you and thank you all for joining me. Thanks everyone. Have a great rest of your day. And if you're in the States, have a wonderful long weekend.